Hello cake flicks, hello everyone, this is me Graziella again from South of France and welcome back to this new episode of Freddy Bike and Decorate. Thank you again Paul and David for all the setup, it's been amazing, it's been a great experience and I'm loving it and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. And this week we are going to be painting magnolias together. Just to remind you quickly, my aim during this first session is to show you how amazing and creative it is to mix techniques and mediums. So after painting a butterfly with oil on wafer paper together, I am going to be painting magnolias or sugar paste using cocoa butter. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like my work, feel free to give it a like or even follow me on my page Design Sucre. I can pop you the link um, a little bit later or on my website wewewe.design-sucre.com um, uh, or um, yeah, on Instagram Design Sucre. It'll be, uh, it'll be amazing to see you there. And of course, if you've got any questions about this tutorial or about anything else, uh, I'm more than happy to answer. So pop me a message, send me an email and I will answer you shortly. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got here my template and I've got a little um, cake board that I've covered in white sugar paste. I've got here a little bit of tracing paper and um, a carbon pen. And what we want to do first is trace the shape of this flower. I'm only going to focus on this flower now. So you want to trace the shape of this flower onto your tracing paper, but you don't want to grab a... a too much details, you uh, just want the main outlines. So I'm just going to quickly draw the petals. this one there big one at the front this one here on the left and as you can see I'm only doing outlines I'm not doing those like shadows and lights nothing I'm only drawing the outlines. The rest is something you can do with your paintbrushes. Got this little one there. Okay, and I'm going to do this bit here and this leaf here. And just a little bit of the stem. I think that's it. So that's basically what you want. So now all you need to do is trace it onto the other side and then place them back in the right position and transfer it on um, your little um, cake drum. What we will do, um, or what I will do um, at least, um, before week six, is I'm going to stick to that template and once I've shown you how to do one flower, I will cover a dummy in white and I will draw the whole branch. But as twigs and uh, leaves and berries are part of another um, life together, um, we're not doing that today and, and I'm not going to paint the three flowers because it's the same technique so I'll do this one today with you and then for week six I'll have the whole branch ready painted on the cake uh, with all flowers and buds. I have transferred my pattern on the sugar paste I don't know if you can see now if you don't want to do it with um a pen like you don't want to have the outlines you could use a needle tool something pointed so that you can uh, 
print the shape in the sugar paste but it will leave you some indents so it depends on what kind of effect you want to have and obviously your sugar paste needs to be um, slightly fresh to do that mine here is completely dried i've covered that board a few days ago so even if i was using a um, scrubbing tool uh, it wouldn't do much to it so um, that's why i'm using the pen um, someone asked me a really good question uh, someone sent me a message asking if there was any um, anything toxic in there no there used to be lean uh, in carbon pens but that was quite ages ago and i don't think there's uh, any more now uh, but yeah when you uh, buy pens you can always check um, the packaging and it will tell you what's in there Now, when I'm painting something realistic, uh, I always keep a little bit of paper um, next to me and my template, and then I will try the colors on the paper and see how they match uh, best. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I've got my colors ready, or well, at least some of them. I might pick an extra ones uh, if I don't get to the right tones. I've got white, which is a color you'll always be using. Um, I've got here it's a lilac and here blackberry mint holly ivy and a bit of well brown color so i'm back after a few tries on my colors and i have reduced my list to white lilac mint so white lilac mint and I uh, couldn't find um, the um, sort of pinkish purplish color I wanted to uh, in my Squire's Kitchen colors. So uh, the closest ones I found in my range of color are Edible Art, Bubblegum and Jazzberry. So this is the Jazzberry. So it's quite a dark purple but still with like lots of uh, pink in there. And uh, this is Bubblegum. So these two this one is a mix of bubblegum and um, jazzberry and this one here is a mix of bubblegum, jazzberry and lilac so I've got different um, shades of colour to use on my um, magnolias and I'm just going to show you very quickly uh, how I managed to get my colours uh, or pick my colours so for example this is bubblegum so I take a little bit of um, color and I'm going to paint it on the side here okay on the edge of the paper right and then I can move it around and you know see on my design where that color is the closest as possible um, as the initial design so this is not perfect perfect but it's quite okay for what I want to do here for example I'm going to clean up my brush just a little bit to show you the next colour so this one here which again is a mix of bubblegum and um, jazzberry so I'm just doing the same painting a little bit on the edge of the paper so you can see it's a lot more purple and I quite like it for you know some of these areas there like some which already have um, some shadow in there and my last one here which is the mix of bubblegum, jazzberry and lilac I'm going to paint it on here you can see it is much much darker and I'm going to use it for the darkest parts of the flower, like the areas where um, the petals are in the complete um, shadow. And I forgot to mention, but for these areas uh, on the inside of the magnolia, which is usually quite white, but not plain white because white doesn't exist um, in nature, right. I have just mixed some white with the slightest 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 tint of um pink color in there so it's just like slightly off white 
yes that's the lightest um thing that you could have so when i paint it on my paper I'm not sure you can see that but yeah it's right there so it's slightly slightly pink and it matches the inside here um, of my flower Just be careful with the uh, copyrighted Im images. Uh, obviously, there are some, depending on what you are, uh, you are painting or, um, well, let's say the topic. Let's say, for example, Disney's art copyrighted, obviously. Uh, there's a big debate about it, so I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, and obviously, if you're, if you're drawing like a landscape or something uh, out of a picture, it might have some copyrights from um, the photographer. So I advise you, you can get in touch with people and they do usually reply quite nicely. Um, or you can just like tag them and just recognize their work and say, uh, you found that beautiful picture from this photographer and you really loved it and you wanted to replicate it in sugar. Uh, and just say that all the credits go to the photographer. Uh, and, and usually it works really well. So once I've uh, picked my images, I uh, transfer them onto a, um, any kind of software on my computer. It could be um, just uh, the, the most simple ones. And I try to picture what size it's gonna be like on my cake. And usually I try to print two or three different sizes um, so that I can obviously see on my cake how it's gonna look better. And that way you can work on your designs, add different pieces, like say, for example, oh yeah, there's going to be a magnolia there this size, and then the smaller one there, and then the butterfly here. And uh, basically that's how I kind of like building my designs other than, you know, just, you know, out of pure creativity. If I am going for something realistic where I need the help um, of something coming from the internet, that's basically what I'm going to do. I have three questions for you. Do you love all things cake? Do you want to learn from some of the world's best cake artists? Do you want to be part of our growing community of over 200,000 members? Then get yourself over to cakeflix.com where we've got some amazing deals on right now. We offer a 365 day support plus the most amazing Q&A service. You can now view us on all the main streaming services. So what are you waiting for? Head over to cakeflix.com now and become part of the Cakeflix family. So I'm gonna start painting these uh, off-white areas. So I'm taking a bit of paint. So for example, all you have to think when you paint um, your flowers, apart obviously from the color, like if this is pink, you want the right shade of pink, um, is lights and shadows. So you've got to see where each single petal meets the other one next to it and the one above will have some light and the one underneath will have some shadow but at the minute i'm just going to um paint very quickly for example i'm going to start with this petal here which is this one there and as you can see it has a little bit of um pink on the outside so you could either choose to leave the area white and add some uh, pink afterwards or as this is cocoa butter and you can layer your colors on top of each other, you could paint the whole thing in um, this off-white color. And once it's dry, you could come back with a little bit of pink.
So my camera has stopped working for some reason, so I'm quickly going to explain what I've done here, but I will show you on the next bits anyway. So I've got my white base ready here, well my off-white base, and I have, I'm just going to do it over what I've already done. See this bit here, that's like um, pink. I add the pink colour on here and at the base here basically where my darkest colors are even if that is not dark enough but i'll come back later with a darker color and when i've got that thin layer of color i'm using a flat paintbrush quite a small one in this case because it's quite a small design and with that so i've got a bit of um, tissue paper in my hand so that i can always wipe the paintbrush because I always want it dry and with no paint on it and with that dry paintbrush I'm simply going to fade the colour fade it in like so and I'm going the way the veins are going as well so like so, like so, and probably like so. And you can always come back if you want to with some lighter paint because again you can build layers of colours. So if I want to, for example, um, I think this is not like white enough, I'll put a little bit of uh, white, wipe off my paintbrush and bring it in this time adding a bit more here and bring it in so that's basically what we want to do so i've done the same here added a little bit of pink Pink here, pink all around here, and then with your dry paintbrush, you fade it in. You want to blend the colours together. Same here, a little bit more white, going to put on here, doesn't have to be any precise because that's what I'm doing with my um, dry brush, bring it in and then come back on the pink and work the pink towards the top of the petal again okay so I'm going to keep doing that for a little while
So don't forget to always have a look at your design, the original um, image, your inspiration image, and keep filling the gaps, the gaps with um, more off-white paint and more bubblegum paint until you reach the sort of color that you are looking for. In my case, I'm almost finished. I'm uh, pretty happy with how it's looking right now with the white and the bubblegum. And I'm going to be able to move on to the next layer of color. Just give it like a few seconds to dry, but you don't want it to be too dry so you can keep blending the colors in. Um, so we're going to move on to uh, the darker uh, pink. We're moving on to um, the darkest pinks and I am painting the darkest area here just so that it doesn't distract your eye too much because when you look at the uh, initial picture uh, you've got those dark uh, areas that do distract your eye once uh, when, they're, when they haven't been painted yet so um, it definitely helps to have them as close as you can to the final colour uh, and then it will help you balance the rest of the colours a lot more. And as you can see I'm outlining uh, the pink areas with that darker shade of uh, bubblegum and I'm simply blending the colour in so I'm making a line on the outside making a line both sides and then I did a bit of color in the middle and very gently blending the color in always making sure my paintbrush is completely dried so I'm wiping it on my piece of paper and then making sure uh, the bristles are completely clean and dry again as this is cocoa butter we can layer as many 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 layers of color as we need so feel free to add some more dark colors and blend them in and add some more blend them in add some more and blend them in until you get um, the right tone as you paint keep looking at the veins on the picture the veins on the petals and when you uh, use your paintbrush painting in the direction of um, the veins. So now to kind of content our eye we're going to add some green again that's uh, so that it doesn't distract our eye too much having this um, really big white area so I'm not going for um, the final shade of pink I'm only adding like uh, the lightest um, of um, the shade of um, greens and um, yeah it's just so that you, you have a like a, a global um, idea of the final design adding some uh, darker greens and darker areas I'm also going to paint a little bit of the stem so that we get closer and closer to um, the picture keep
keep hitting some uh, darker browns and darker greens and then come back to the flower and add some more uh, off-white and pinks. I'm going to be using some uh, Spectrum Flow airbrush colour. Uh, it's a blue, sky blue, and I'm going to take a little makeup sponge and mix some alcohol with the paint and gently dab the colour. So, as you can see, I'm using the thin end of my makeup sponge to dab the colour close to the flower, and then if I want to blend it, I can use the other side of the sponge. Um, which is quite, which is dry at the minute. It doesn't have no paint, no alcohol, no whatsoever, um, and it allows you to uh, blend the colours in and have uh, almost no um, seams or um, no droplets of colour. So I'm just going all around the flower, f first with uh, a very light blue. If I need to get into some small areas, I can always use a paintbrush. And I'm going all around the flower, the stem, the stem, the leaf, and slowly I'm adding some darker blue around to increase um, the depth of the flower. So I'm only doing this because on my final design, which is going to be a double barrel um, dummy cake with a whole branch painted on it, I kind of want it. Um, well, I'm going to cover it in white first, but then I want to kind of have like a sky effect behind um, the branch. It's like having a little bit of the sky behind at the back. Um, and you don't need to paint the whole tier, but it just gives a little extra effect and uh, it just looks very pretty. So I'm adding more blue, more blue, and then dabbing with the other side of the sponge. And you can see it's blending the colour very nicely. It's kind of softening uh, the paint. And now I'm going to continue this until I reach um, the right shade of blue. You can keep adding some blue as much as you like until you reach the correct shade that you're uh, trying to achieve. 
it could be as light or as dark as you kind of want but as again I'm going for a white background um, on my dummy cake I'm going for quite a soft blue quite a light blue so that there's um, not a big difference with the rest of the cake and then of course you can always come back with more colors on your flower because you will realize that adding some blue around is going to make you see where you need more paint and more depth To complete the design, I always like to use pure white and really dark colours. So the pure whites are going to go on the uh, bits of the flower uh, that really catch the light. So it's going to be mainly, for example, top edges of your petals. Uh, just have a look at your design and see where the lightest areas are. And um, add a little, little bit of white, just a thin line that you can always blend in the rest of the flower to make it look more subtle. But it will look like the light is, um, it will look like the light is uh, striking on this area. so that we increase the depth of our paint.
again you can come back on your design with how many layers you'd like whether the dark layers of or light layers of color until you reach um, something that makes you happy and you can also focus at the very end on drawing a few lines to kind of mimic the veins of your petals or leaves and um, so yeah just add some more uh, details to your flower so we have now completed our design. So this is my painted magnolia flower. As you can see, this has been drawing for a few hours now. So if I rub my finger on top of it, there's no pain coming out, coming off. So um, if it's not too warm, obviously, uh, it's a, this is really gonna stay nice and beautiful. So that's the initial design and that's the flower. What I'm going to do, uh, as I said before, uh, for the very end of the project is to get that double barrel covered in a white sugar paste and get the whole branched design on the side. So it's probably becoming a long, like it's not gonna be flat like this, it's gonna be at a slight angle. And we can add our flowers, like our realistic sugar magnolias that we will be doing together um, next week. Um, what you could also do, because I think it looks amazing on a cake, is after you've painted the whole branch on your double barrel, uh, you can paint some of those, they can be slightly smaller or roughly the same size as the biggest one on uh, separate gum paste uh, pieces. So just to explain you, uh, you could roll some gum paste, roll out some gum paste and cut it in the shape of the flower. So I wouldn't have uh, any background or anything. I would just cut the, um, the uh, gum paste like on the edges of this flower. And then when you've, once you've got this, you leave it to dry for as long as you need it to dry until it's like super, super hard and solid. And then you can transfer the design on it and you can paint it. And I think they are usually lovely to add, for example, in between tiers, or, you know, it, it adds really some depth to your design to have the painted ones plus those kind of ones um, hanging on top of the cake and the realistic ones in sugar. So if, if you keep adding those techniques and, uh, you know, just trying to um, add some more layers, the more layers and the more depth in your design. So that's basically what we want to achieve. And that's why we go for that 2D, 3D effect, mixing the paint and mixing the uh, sugar flowers. But obviously, if you can add a third depth in it, by having a painted separate uh, flower, then um, it'll look amazing. And I'll, I'm probably going to be doing one uh, of those separate ones so that when we assemble the whole cake on week six, uh, I can show you how to attach them and how to um, make them look pretty in the arrangement and uh, yeah, how to make them fit in the, the whole design. For next week, we're going to uh, do the sugar magnolias. So I'm gonna get some uh, veiners ready and some cutters, got them here already, like cutters. Uh, and I will show you how to create, not the most realistic magnolias, because I'm not going for like something super, super realistic. I'm more going for the design type of look, but it will still look realistic though. It's not just like 100% botanically correct. Um, so I will show you how to um, to make the centers, to make the bells obviously, we will work on creating a branch, adding um, the leaves and um, so that this is all ready to add to your final design. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see you again next Tuesday, 9 p.m. UK time for the fourth episode of Ready, Bake and Decorate. And until then, you can obviously um, follow me and more than anything, follow all the other amazing artists and watch their demos and their brilliant work. Everyone's doing like a fantastic job. Um, so yeah, uh, just enjoy it. So enjoy your time on Cake Flicks and um, I'll sure see you very shortly. 
Until then, stay safe and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.